Welcome! And on today's show, I get my hands on a reissue of quite possibly the rarest Millsap on the planet. But first... Today's shot comes from Small Wrist Club. This is a superb photo of the Seiko 5 SNK803. This is one of those perfect choices for anyone starting this watch hobby. It's got a very reliable movement inside it and it's quite popular among the watch family. I've got to say, I do love this cream dial. Sometimes I think it's quite pilot looking. Other times it's quite fieldy looking. This thing's ready for any action. And it's been partnered up with a beautiful suede strap Look at that, very nice. Thanks for tagging me in, my friend. It's highly appreciated. If you'd like to be on the next Seiko Showcase, all you gotta do, find me on Instagram here and tag me in on one of your Seiko posts. Who knows? Next time, the star of the show could, could be you. Seiko. I've been so excited to show off this watch to you. Get and I'm watch out. Well, I'm wearing my beloved Sin 104, one of my favourite watches in the fleet. Right now, I've got it on the fantastic Haverston Nav 39 leather pilot strap. This company always gives you superb quality, inspired by military moments and machines across the decades. What a Vorsprung durch Technik Stanner! Okay, Cabot Watch Company. You guys know I love them because I've done two shows before on their watches. A British watch company with one goal. To supply Her Majesty's Armed Forces with a highly reliable timepiece. Now, since 1972, CWC had contracts with many of the armed forces. But the one they hadn't bagged yet was the Royal Navy contract. Now, the Royal Navy had a long-standing relationship with a small watch company called, I don't know if you know them, Rolex. Yes, Rolex and the Royal Navy goes back all the way to the 1950s. Now, towards the end of the 70s, Rolex's prices were getting higher and higher. And the MOD, probably due to cost-cutting, finished their relationship with Rolex and asked CWC if they could help. So this is a big step. A changing of the guard. Anyway, in 1980... That's when I was born. The first mill sub was made for the Royal Navy and there were certain specifications from the MOD that this watch had to have. Like a rotating bezel with an aluminous insert, sword hands, bold markers filled with tritium and fixed spring bars to name just a few. It also housed a very reliable Swiss ETA movement inside. Now this 1980 automatic diver is very rare. It's rare because there were only about 300 pieces made and in 81 there were slight differences made to the dial but by 83 the divers no longer housed an automatic movement it was quartz now to find one of these 1980 Royal Navy divers is hard in itself these watches are sold for easily 10,000 pounds they're far rarer than a Rolex mill sub and are the rarest mill sub you can get very interesting isn't it now CWC have made a reissue of this watch and have sent it in to me for review so so excited. Are you ready to see it? Then let's go! Now when you buy a CWC watch, usually they are housed in one of these lovely boxes. No thrills, but a sturdy construction. With these you are given a very special Italian leather watch roll, which is very snazzy. Also when you buy one of these watches, you are given two straps. You see we have the watch housed on the left and an extra strap on the right. Pull out the watch and boy, I absolutely love this thing. It's shape, it's bold design, it's clean dial. This thing feels special already. So like the original, this watch is polished all over. 316L steel. We've got a screw down crown that's integrated really well with these crown guards. I love that look. It's a coin edge crown, a great size. Turn the watch over and we have a screw down case back. The name of the company on the top, Swiss made. The 0552 is the Royal Navy NATO designation for the 1980s. And then we have the NATO stock number. We then have that broad arrow hand. I do love a broad arrow hand. Signifying that this was an MOD issued tool. Then we have the serial number of the watch and then the year it was made. Then we have the words water resistant 3080M, which is 300 meters. Quick spec check. We've got a 41 millimeter case. It's 40 
27 lug tip to lug tip. It's just over 12 and a half millimeters thick and we've got a lug width of 20 mils. So a great set of dimensions for most wrists. Yay! Okay, so on to that bezel and it is beautiful. It's 60 clicks and it has an acrylic insert with loomed markers. Hi, I'm Kurt Santana and welcome to the World Bezeling Federation. Yes, the show dedicated to find the best bezel on a watch. The chosen watch will go through three rounds. The look, the grip, and fidgetability. Smashing. Referee today is none other than Iron Mike Dyson. Say hello, Mike. Let's get a bezel in. Okay, now this military beauty has an acrylic insert that is loomed. The thickness is nice, and it has tremendous presence. Our referee scores this a nice. Onto the grip. This also covers the ratcheting, the purchase, the strength needed to turn that bezel. Oh, this is nice. Built like a tank on the top of a gunship. Referee scores this solid A. And onto the fidgetability. How much do I want to twist this bezel? Morning, noon, and night. A. Giving us a total score of 24 points and goes up on the leaderboard proud. This bezel is absolutely superb and it's not until you actually have one in your hands and you twist one do you know how good it is. <laughs> And onto that dial. Well, it's matte black with white minute markers and very chunky loomed hour markers. Now you can get this watch in three different looms. You can get a dark vintage, you can get a light vintage, which is this one, or the C3 loom, which is modern looking green. Personally, I think this color loom looks the best. It's got a slight vintage look, but it really works well with the polished case. So we've got the three, six, and nine printed on the dial, as well as the nine 1980 vintage logo of CWC just below the 12 marker and below the handset circled we have the letter T which stands for tritium because of course the original had tritium loomed markers. It's a great handset. I love that broadsword style, but I also love that diamond tip seconds hand. And the dial is protected by a sapphire glass. Powering this bad boy, we have an ETA 2824-2 Swiss automatic movement. It beats at 28,800 beats per hour and has a 38 hour power reserve. Let's see how this beauty does on the time grapher. And circuits on engage. Well, this ETA 2824 has given us some good numbers. We are gaining three seconds per day. It has an amplitude of 265 degrees and a beat error of zero. Zilch, nada. A very good set of numbers for a very reliable Swiss movement. Take care, everyone. And remember, if something can't be timed, spoon it. Bye. To operate this puppy is very simple. So you unscrew the crown and you feel a definite pop. The winding of this ETA movement is beautiful. Pop it out again and you get a de- w w what Yes, there is a ghost date position on this movement and it turns out that the original had a ghost date as well. Anyway, pull out the crown to the last position and you get to set the time and we have hacking. Okay, Swiss Super Luminova on the handset and the markers and the bezel insert. Let's see how bright you are. Well, that's just magic, isn't it? It's like a little light show. Very strong loom, highly legible because of the different shaped markers. And it's one of the best looms we've had on this channel so far. On my six and a half inch wrist, and this thing makes me feel special. With the lug to lug only being 47 mils, this thing looks absolutely great on my wrist. It makes me feel proud. This watch never actually fought in any battles. It was never part of any missions, but it has the heritage of that 90. 1980 Royal Navy Diver, which superseded the Rolex Mill Sub. <laughs> Now CWC only have a limited supply of these reissues and they are priced at £1,999. Now for everything you get, the heritage, the design, the Swiss build, and you're wearing a watch that you can be pretty proud of, I think this is a great price and would look amazing in a military watch collection.
Let me know what your thoughts are on this watch. I'd love to know. And also feel free to let me know if there are any watches you'd like me to review for 2021. From me, the Mad Watch Collector, I'll see you in a tick, 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 a tick. Every hour, every minute